We always do a big Christmas at our house, and for years my crazy brother-in-law Jesse has been bugging me about how I need to cook a turducken. A turducken? A turducken? What the hell is a turducken? Isn't that some kind of mythical creature? You know, like a unicorn or maybe a jackalope? That jackrabbit thingy with the antlers? Or is it like going snipe hunting with Dick Cheney? Ah, but no, a turducken is for real. To create a turducken, you stuff a chicken inside a duck, and then you stuff them both inside a turkey. The sound you hear is the shuddering of vegetarians nationwide. Okay, so it's time to play Iron Chef and build a turducken for Christmas 2006. The first stop on my quest to build my turducken was my sister Tina's. She volunteered to make the three different stuffings for the three different birds. I brought the makings over to her house and she hauled them into the house and got started. Next stop was Goodrich's ShopRite in East Lansing. That's one of those neat little grocery stores that really takes Christmas seriously. Unlike corporate food stores, the guys at the meat counter actually know something and talk to their customers. Doc gave me all the information I needed to make a turducken. How long do I cook it when it's done? I would say four and a half to five hours. Mine was one of 400 special orders that he filled this last Christmas. He personally deboned all three birds, no mean task in and of itself. Back home, the dogs even loved sniffing the boxes. Tina came through with the stuffings. First up is the Cajun stuffing that goes into the chicken. This one's made of rice and shrimp with all those Cajun spices. Then there's the cornbread stuffing that goes in the duck. I ended up making the apple onion stuffing myself to stuff the turkey. I made a mistake and gave Tina a recipe, the one with apples and wild rice that also had eggs in it. Then Doc warned me that eggs are a no-no, too big a danger of salmonella. So on Christmas Eve, I made an apple, onion, celery dressing, the one with no eggs. With the help of my most inquisitive cat, I also unpackaged and prepared the three birds. Chicken, duck, turkey. I rinsed them in cold water and salted them to try to stop some of that blood taste. Yuck. The second biggest challenge in making a dick to turducken is the assembly part. I'll tell you about the biggest challenge later. First you lay out the deboned turkey and you cover it with a layer of the apple onion dressing. Then you put that deboned duck on top and smush on a layer of the cornbread stuffing. Now it's time for the chicken layer and on top of that goes the Cajun stuffing. The really hard part is sewing that sucker together so it even <laughs> vaguely looks like a turkey. Husband Here Brew helped wrestle the turducken into shape. Oops while I stuck in the skewers and sutured him up with what looks like baling twine. I kept expecting an angry mob of PETA protesters to show up, but my crazed friend Ray tells me that PETA actually stands for People Eating Tasty Animals. On Christmas morning, I awoke to face the biggest turducken challenge. How long does it take to cook this monster bird all the way through? Now there are two schools of thoughts on roasting a turducken. There's the 225 degrees for nine hours contingent. That's an awfully long time at an awfully low temp. Then there are the people who recommend five hours at 350. That's what Doc told me to do. I went with the 350 degree oven idea because the higher temp seemed to save her bed against salmonella, but mostly I just didn't want to get up at four or five on Christmas morning to make my turducken in time for those guests coming at one o'clock. The big issue, of course, is to rely on your meat thermometer. My friend Bridget, who works for the Michigan Department of Agriculture, sends everybody an email before each holiday reminding us that you need an internal minimum temp of 165 degrees for poultry to be safe. So anyhow, I put in my turducken at 8 o'clock in the morning. Hmm, is that thermometer needle moving at all? Good thing I made some honey and lime basted kebabs. Also put together some of that crostini with the homemade apple chutney and the goat cheese. and Also made some of that Jezebel sauce. You know, that's that southern specialty where you have apricots in with red pepper jelly, pineapple preserves, mustard, and horseradish. For all the recipes, you can go to www.spartanedge.com slash turducken. Uh-huh. The thermometer is finally starting to move. There it goes into the safe zone. One more klezmer tune and our guests should be ready to eat.
should be time to carve that turducken. Wow, kind of looks square on the bottom. I didn't realize that your deboned turducken tends to take on the shape of the roaster pan as it cooks. Okay, Drew's doing the carving now. Looking good. Lots of white meat. Lots of stuffing. But where's the duck? Where's the chicken? Where's that cornbread dressing? Where's that Cajun shrimp dressing? Ooh, there's the duck. Ooh, looks a little pale, doesn't he? Uh-oh. Time for the turducken to go back in the oven. And back to a few more klezmer tunes. Maybe a little embraceable you on the piano with Nancy. <laughs> So how was our turducken? Well, we can't really give you an answer because our turducken turned out to be a two-course meal. The tur followed by the ducken. And to be honest, nobody was brave enough or hungry enough to eat much of the ducken. My advice, if you're gonna make a turducken and you wanna know for sure that it's cooked all the way through, buy a meat thermometer with a longer spike. Well, maybe next year what we'll do instead is three French hens, maybe, a couple turtle doves. I don't know. You want that partridge in a pear tree, maybe?